Hi, Leap3800. This is Adriana Parker, and I'm your librarian. Today I'm going to be introducing you to some electronic resources that the library has that you might want to use for your research this semester. Um, this is the library's website, lib.utah.edu. Um, if you Google Marriott Library, that's another good way to get there. You can also get there through the Campus Information Systems page. Anyway, this is like the portal to all of the library, everything you've ever wanted to know about the library, including what we have, both physically in our collections and electronically. In the upper right-hand corner, since you are off campus, I imagine, you will want to log in. And when you click log in, it will prompt you to log in with your university ID and password, just like CIS. I'm already logged in, so I'm just going to go from here. Um, the tempting thing about the library's website is this great big search box, but I'm going to ask you all for a moment to ignore it and go instead, follow your eyes down with my cursor here because it is not super bold, but this is where the library's databases live. We are an organization that loves navigation bars. So if you're ever lost, look for nav bars all over the place. Anyway, databases live, well, here, I'll show you. This is the portal to all of our 400 plus library databases. You'll see one featured um, every month in case you're a database nerd like me. Um, otherwise, you'll probably just use databases for practical reasons like school. So here's the database of databases. We have, like I said, over 400 databases here that you can access by their name, um, by their subject, and these are all connected to fields of study on campus or by the type of information that you're interested in. So that means like the container of information. Say I'm looking for newspapers. I can go here and get a whole bunch of diverse, interesting, up-to-date and historical newspapers. Or back up to the top, I can even look at statistical data sets. This is kind of interesting too. Um, but these are kind of general uh, categories of databases. So I want to show you one last thing. Under subject, you can find even more general databases. And this is where I recommend folks go if they're unsure which subject their, their research question fits under. So if you don't know, I don't know, would I go to ballet with my question? Would I go to education or one of the engineering disciplines? Or maybe I want to look at a multidisciplinary database first. So I'm going to take you to one of those. Academic Search Ultimate is our number one recommended, as you can see here, woo, um, library database. Um, it's super popular because it is multidisciplinary. That means that it covers lots of topics. You'll find full text, books, journals, um, like journal articles, sometimes entire like volumes of journals, things like that. So I'm going to do a search here and it is a broad search. I'm just going to do a search for plastics and India and sustainability. So this will give you an idea of what databases do. All of our databases basically function this way. You take a search term or a few search terms like I have, and I've separated plastics, India, and sustainability with the word and. And indicates to the database, I want you to return only those results that include this word, this word, and this word. Um, in every database that you will access, whether it's Amazon or you're using Target's website or 
a library database like this or a library catalog. They all kind of operate in similar ways. Like we're not selling stuff here, but we do have stuff that you can consume, right? Stuff you can read. So in the left-hand column, we like to give you some tools to better manage your results. I got 95 results, and I think that's actually like a number of results that I am willing to look at. They're default organized by relevance, but I can reorganize them from newest to oldest or author, source, or whatever. Um, but 95 is actually a pretty good number of results. Like I'm not willing to look at a million results, but I am probably willing and patient enough to look at a title and maybe a little bit of an abstract. But if not, if you're like, nah, I only want those results that are the most relevant, I know it's going to be really tempting to limit yourself to full text, but I'm going to ask you not to do that um, because I'm going to help you to find stuff in this database or, or stuff that you can't find in that this database in other ones. So don't click that, even though it's super duper tempting. But if you do want to look for just scholarly or peer-reviewed information, you can do that here, clicking this, and it will change the results. We go from 95 results to 88 results. Um, the other thing that you can do is change the publication date, late, uh, date range. Oh, pardon me, tripping over my tongue. So um, if you're looking at a very current form of technology, you might want to update this timeline to say the most, let's do the most recent five years. So that's what, 2016 to 2021? Let's change that. And it will update from 88 results to 67. So this is a little bit better um, and more manageable. So I'm going to scroll through here and see if there's anything that looks like it's potentially useful for my for my imaginary research project. You all have a real research project. I'm going to pretend that I am most interested in biodegradable polymers. And I want to take a look at this article. And so when I click on this, that link, I get author's names. This is really cool because all of these authors are linked and generally folks don't write about a bunch of different topics. When they have PhDs, they tend to write about one topic. So you may find that these authors, when you click on their titles, will have other articles related to this very same technology. Um, the other thing that is useful here is the abstract. So an abstract is just a really brief synopsis of what the whole article is about. So instead of reading, let's see how many pages there are in this article. It's a one page article. Instead of reading one page, I could read one paragraph. Often articles will have, this isn't the greatest example, but they'll have, they'll be super long, like 30 pages, 60 pages. And this abstract will really come in handy for determining if the article you're looking at is relevant or not. Um, if this were an article I wanted to use for my research, um, I want to show you all something. Notice how a lot of these say find it or view it. Let's click view it. This should give us the full text. However, it looks like it is not available in full text through that database. That's totally okay. I'm going to close this link here and I'm going to click find it. And this will ask our library uh, database of databases to see, oh wow, it took us to the same place. It didn't used to do that and I apologize. Anyway, it takes us to this page to see if it's available or not. I want to check my availability since it says, sadly no, there are no databases here. We can request it through another database. 
And I'm going to take a moment to talk about Interlibrary Loan because it's a really cool free service. So this list is still here. I'm going to scroll, 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 scroll. Eventually you will find, for real, HTML full text or a PDF and full text. But I want you all to know what to do when this stuff happens, when you have to request an article. So Interlibrary Loan is a free service that the university libraries provide where if we don't have an article or a book or a book chapter or a conference paper or a report, yada, 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 that you might need, we have this service where you can request um, that we borrow it from another library. That's what interlibrary means, between libraries. So a few things I want to point out, um, because I'm logged in, Already to interlibrary loan, it's auto completed most of this form for me. Um, otherwise, it will ask you to register for interlibrary loan, and I recommend that you do it. You will totally love this service. I'm going to show you why. So, I'm going to make sure all of this shit is like with the red asterisks is marked and has some information in it. Um, the not wanted after date is a really strange way to say what is the last possible date that I would like to receive this article. Um, the default is about, it's a month from now. So if you don't have the time to wait for a month, you can say, well, I would really like this article like in a week. So let's change this date to the 19th. And will I accept the item in a language other than English? If yes, please indicate which language or languages you will in this notes field. Otherwise, click no. Um, I am not fully bilingual. I am really embarrassed at my Spanish skills, so I'm not going to perform any of them for y'all today. But trust me, they're not good. That's why I selected no. Anyway, totally up to you. That's actually all you have to fill out. And then you submit the request. Actually, it's not. The author field was left blank. So I'm going to go back here. That was really funny. I'm going to grab this, just copy and paste it. Even librarians make mistakes. Especially librarians make mistakes, I mean. And then I'm going to submit the request, unless any other forms aren't filled out, or fields. But they were! Hooray! So now I have this pending request. And you can check on it as often as you'd like. Right now I'm awaiting copyright, <laughs> copyright clearance. Um, but what will happen is after you've filled out your... Um, contact info for interlibrary loan, we will just send you an email um, at whichever email address you prefer, um, letting you know that your request has been received. So I would find it under electronically received articles or other items, um, unless it's a physical item. And usually the turnaround for electronic stuff is really fast. I'm betting by the time I upload this video to YouTube, I'll already have my article waiting for me. Um, for physical requests, the turnaround is a little bit longer. Um, cool thing is, once you get something, you can access it for 30 days. It will be stored here, like I said, um, as a PDF generally, and in that time you can do whatever you want with it. You can download it a million times, you can print it a million times. If, if you were to share it with somebody, we don't know. We believe in the honor system. So do what you need to do with information. Anyway, back to Academic Search Ultimate. Um, really cool database. The other one last thing I want to show you about this database that's a little bit different from others. Um, a couple Oh, shoot. One thing that's the same, one thing that's different. Okay, let's look at this article. Let's pretend this article, again, is the one that I love and I have access to a copy of it. What I can do here is I can grab a citation. 
and y'all are able to cite in either IEEE or APA. Um, for those of you citing in APA, this is kind of cool. You can just copy and paste this, or if this were like a full text article, like this one down below, I'm going to scroll to this random one here. I'm going to click HTML full text and I'm going to go email. I could do HTML or PDF. It actually gives me the option right here to include a PDF as an attachment. You can email this shit to yourself. Um, and you can even decide which um, citation format you would like it in. Um, kind of a bummer for folks doing IEEE, but I've got your back later, um, later in this video. Otherwise, I'll just send this. Oh, I should email it to myself. Oops. Um, I really do stuff like this. It's article number one. And then I send it to myself. And ta-da, this is a really cool way to get access to articles. Um, the other thing about this article in particular is that it shows you that you can get it in full text as a PDF. So I want to show you what's different here. A PDF is just like a scanned copy, right? So this is nice for when you're doing um, like quotes or if you're using figures from an article, you can borrow them and cite them. Um, I'm hoping like this, we can go to table one. If I wanted to cite table one in my paper, I could totally do that thanks to this PDF. So PDFs are great. HTML full text is great. Um, they have different features, kind of really depends on what your needs are. Um, the other thing I want to show you, so this is just one of many library databases that we have that are multidisciplinary. Again, I'm gonna skip this great big search box right here, super tempting, and go to the innocuous gray tab that says databases. I'm gonna go back to select databases by subject and then go to general. So here are other multidisciplinary databases that may or may not be useful to your research needs, depending on what your topic is. Um, I'd recommend just scrolling through. You'll see there are very um, broad stuff from like Victorian ephemera to automobile stuff to the CIA World Factbook. Um, lots and lots of diverse uh, databases here though that are potentially useful. One thing I wanted to show you about um, Academic Search Ultimate is that it is one of the EBSCOhost databases collection and they feature, it sounds like I'm doing an ad for them, they, they have about 40 databases that are discipline specific so you can search Academic Search Ultimate or Academic Search Premier um, simultaneously with stuff like Alt Health Watch or American History and Life, depending on what your research needs are. So just take a moment to kind of skim through this and read through which uh, subject specific databases they have, because you'll find stuff related to psychology to art, to, I guess I could show you, biomedical stuff. So there are engineering related um, databases here. This is a nursing database that may come in handy when you're thinking about plastics and sustainability because part of sustainability has to do with health, right? Computer source, lots and lots of diverse stuff. But anyway, whatever you, you like, and are interested in as far as um, these databases go, green file might be a really good one because it's related to aspects of human impact to the environment. So I'm going to go back to the top 
and hit continue and then you'll recognize this same interface, right? But I'm not just searching Academic Search Ultimate now. I'm searching a few other databases and I can do the same search or a different search that I did before. Like I could do plastics and India and sustainability. I type a lot better and faster when I'm not recording myself, I promise. All right, so we'll get different results. Remember last time when we did this search only in Academic Search Ultimate, we had something like 95 results. Now we've got 228. So this is one way that you can navigate the databases. Um, but I encourage you to go back to the library's database of databases here, this very exciting gray tab, um, and just explore. You know what you're researching, and you know, I, th I have a lot of faith in y'all, that you know what you need. So, how interesting though that Academic Search Ultimate also comes up under the, the basic engineering guide. Anyway, I'll leave it to y'all with the databases here. Um, and if you're searching for something outside of engineering like the social sciences, please feel free to reach out to me um, to talk about it and I can give you recommendations on which databases I would use. I'm going to do something different now. I'm going to close the library's website and we're for a second and we're going to go to Google Scholar. Raise your hand if you've used Google Scholar before. I always like to take a quick survey. I've used it. You are ultimately the only one who knows the results to this survey. So maybe 50%, maybe 100%. Anyway, Google Scholar is awesome. It's like Google, but fancy style because it's looking only at scholarly information. So if I were to search for our search topic, my very broad search topic. Check out how many results I get here. I think it's always a good idea to kind of test the effectiveness of your search statement, i.e. what you've typed into the search bar, by looking at how, num how many results you got. So the fewer results, the better, right? I got 37,000 results. That's kind of too many for me, unless I'm on, I don't know, Netflix. But I, again, just like in the database that I showed you, Academic Search Ultimate, you can change um, the date range here by selecting a custom date range. So let's do that. See if that tightens up our results a little bit. I'll do 2021. And we've gone from a lot of results to a, a still a lot of results, 16,000. Um, what can I do at this point if I want to get fewer results? Maybe I can be more specific about which type of plastics. So how about I do something like automotive? I totally stole that from this result here. Automatic, automotive plastics and India and sustainability. Um, you'll notice I put quotes around automotive plastics. That tells whatever search engine you're using that you want that exact search, that phrase. So those words in that exact order. You wouldn't do it with a single word because unless you're trying to be funny in person and you're doing like air quotes. But if you want to search for an exact phrase like automotive plastics or sustainable development or um, I love spaghetti, you can search for those exact phrases just by putting quotations around them. Um, and I'm going to click search again and we went down to 70 results. Holy mackerel, y'all. That's pretty good. Um, that may be the very best I've ever gotten using Google Scholar. Um, something cool I want to point out to you though, your Google Scholar might look a little bit different from mine 
if you're, I don't know, following along at home and you're typing into Google Scholar with me, that's a really cool idea. Maybe you could do that. Go to Google Scholar right now. Um, and then click in the upper left corner. I'm all about corners. You'll notice there's this little box made out of lines and we can go to settings here. Then I'm going to click on library links. I actually, I've already done this. Um, so my Google Scholar will already look a little bit different, but type in the name of your university. I'm going to do University of Utah and click find and then it gives me all of the Utah universities. I want University of Utah. I'm going to keep Open World Cat because it's cool and I'll talk about that in a minute and then I'm going to click save. What this does is it syncs up the library's holdings with electronic holdings with Google Scholar. So if this result right here doesn't take you to full text, this PDF comes from the U of U and it will. It comes specifically from our library. Oh yeah. So I just downloaded it. There it is. Amazing. I'm going to close that up um, and show you what the like Google Scholar supplied result looks like. Here it takes us to, it looks like, and this is kind of a bummer, it takes us just to the abstract. So this can happen when you're using even Google Scholar or a library database. It's going to ask you to log in. You don't need to log in. Just do that sync up that I did on Google Scholar and you don't even have to worry about it. Um, whoa, how did we get here? This is the last thing I wanted to talk about, like some quick this is such an ugly screen. I apologize. I didn't want to do a PowerPoint because they're boring. But this is also kind of boring. You just looking at my Google Doc. Anyway, there are a bunch of free services at the library. We've already talked about interlibrary loan. Um, I want to talk about suggest a purchase. So we're going to go there. Maybe. Please go there. Here we are. Suggest a purchase. I'm going to show you how to find this too later. But suggest a purchase just means we don't own something and you think that we ought to. That's a good enough reason for us to own something. You can also use interlibrary loan, but if you want to keep an item for longer than 30 days or 120 days, then you can just ask for anything you'd like right here. So that includes books, um, journal subscriptions, um, video games, stuff like that. It starts out by having you select your university affiliation and I want you all to know all of these affiliations carry the same weight. We process requests in the order that we get them so we don't put faculty requests in front of student or staff requests everybody's requests have equal weight. And then we want you to identify what type of media that, or material you're suggesting. If you'd like a book, you can suggest an ebook or a print book. A database, that will get you lots and lots of journal articles um, to lots of different journals, or you can ask for one specific journal title, or even a newspaper title. Or if you want a film, or other type of media, like say you want a video game, you could put that in here. Um, it, fill out as much information as you can, like for the example of a video game, um, you would have like a creator and a, a company that produces it rather than a publisher. But whatever information you can provide us with is dope. Um, if you would like it to be a rush request, just let us know. I always do rush requests. That means usually I get my item in pretty quick, pretty quick. I almost said pretty quack, pretty quickly, uh, like less than two weeks. And if you want to be notified, I always recommend that they'll just email you when your item is available. Um, we can 
like I said earlier, or maybe I didn't say this earlier, this is new. We can send stuff directly to your home because of COVID. So I want to show you some other quick COVID updates. If you go to the library's main page, lib.utah.edu, and that URL hasn't changed for a, the past 14 years that I've been here, so please feel free to get it tattooed on your body if you would like to. Um, this is very helpful though. You can take a look at all of our services here and see if they've been impacted by COVID. Um, stuff like, I'm just going to do like a command F and search for um, suggest a purchase. Oh, this is Eccles. I just want J. Does not show me suggest a purchase here. That's a bummer. Well, that's okay. I can show it to you elsewhere. Let's see. Okay, forget what I just said. We're going to look at all of them, not just the ones for Jay Willard. That's our main library, the one that I have. I have our health sciences library, and we also have a law library. But, um, yeah, these are the services that are modified and or temporarily suspended. Otherwise, everything is in regular operation. Um, I'm going to take you back to the main website and show you where you can suggest a purchase. So this is a little bit buried. You can always just Google it, <laughs> but if you go to services, and all services, this is where a global search, control F, will give me suggest. There we go, Oop, darn it, there it is. Suggest a purchase, functioning according to regular operation. That's kind of cool. You can also find, I'm gonna doing command F here, or if you're on a PC, control F, um, I can do a search for interlibrary loan, and there it is. So, really quick and easy way to find those two services. Um, let me check to see if we have anything else I'd like to talk with you about. Oh, this is really cool. Um, you can meet with a, per a specialist, I almost said a person, um, a librarian person who is, um, like me, an expert in your field of study, maybe. Um, this is the complete list of all of our experts, and you can contact us by email, by phone. I'm going to just have you contact me via um, email or through Canvas, and on Canvas I'll put my phone number there. Um, the last COVID update is that you can still reserve study spaces. So these are modified. They don't fit the, the standard capacity. We've cut the capacity in half for COVID safety, but this is where you can reserve a study space if you would like to um, visit the library and if, or if you're just on campus, say picking up something you've requested. And... This is also sort of a bummer, but it's important to point out the library, the library charges fees for stuff that's returned past its due date. Um, there's totally no shame in having late fees. I have late fees and I work at the library. So I'm going to give you a hot tip. If you call the library, sometimes they will be willing to forgive your fees, especially if you say, my librarian, Adriana, suggested that I contact you about possibly forgiving my fees. So it's worth a shot. It's worth a shot, right? Um, the last thing I want to show you um, related to the library's website is this. This is a guide that we have for annotated bibliographies. The reason I'm showing you this is because you will be using... Um, in your teams, you'll be using the databases to find sources, and for the library's assignment, 
I'd like your team to provide two sources where they are in either APA format or IEEE format and you provide an annotation for me as well. So this is a really cool guide that we have at the library. It's It doesn't have a super catchy title, does it? Let's see. It should have a catchy title, but that's okay. Um, if you just Google campus guides and annotated bibliography, you will find it. But I will also provide a link to this on Canvas for y'all. Um, but this is such a cool guide. It gives sample annotated bibliographies. It describes what the elements of an, annot of an annotation are. I can kind of give you the quick and dirty right here. So here is a sample in APA. We've got the author of the, it looks like a book, and authors of the book, the year of publication, and the title of the book. Oh wait, I take it back, no, totally not a book at all. Gotta keep reading my citation. This is an article title. The reason I can tell that is because of the info that follows. Once again, also librarians mess up. Thank you for being patient with me. Um, oh, no. A citation. This is a journal citation, which it actually is identified as above. Um, but you can tell it's a journal citation because the journal title is in italics, and the numbers that follow are the volume, issue, and corresponding page numbers. Then, right underneath that, you've got your annotation. An annotation is kind of like an abstract where you tell us what the article is about, but in your annotation, you'll want to tell us why it's relevant to your group's, your team's research question. So this is a good guide. I'm going to link to it on Canvas for y'all um, so you don't have to remember this super catchy URL, https colon slash slash campusguides.lib.utah.edu slash, I'm joking, I won't read all of it. Um, the last thing I want to talk to you about is evaluating information. And I'm going to take you to Google because Google is where so much information lives, including my very, very favorite way to kind of, not kind of, my very favorite way to evaluate a source. It's called the crap test. And you can see I've actually looked this up before. The crap test is super great you can find it all over Google. Look, there's even an entry for it on Wikipedia. It is that famous. I'm wagging my finger at the, the computer right now. The crap test originates from the Merriam Library at California State U, Chico, which is formerly America's number one party school. I'm going to just show you like a real easy way to view it, a really easy way to view it. Pardon my nonsense language sometimes. This is like crap in a nutshell. Ew. I'm sorry I put it that way. Um, there are lots of questions that go along with the crap test, and I'm going to show you the whole list when you find it under... CSU Chico, oh yeah, doesn't look like a party school from here, but these are really great questions. So if you are, once you actually do your assignment and begin searching for information, run through all these questions for real. But this is just like the quick overview. So CRAP is an acronym that is misspelled and stands for currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. Currency, I'm gonna just make this big and give you a little bit more info. Because your projects have to do with sustainability, I'm going to say that currency is an important criterion for your sources. 
So current means within the past five to 10 years, ideally within two to three. Relevant. Is it relevant to your information needs? That means, is it actually about your topic or is it too broad? We can find a lot of stuff about plastics, sustainability, and India, but is it all about automotive plastics? No. So that's where relevance comes into play. Authority is the source of information like a reputable source. Source. Gosh, tripping over my tongue again. Is the author, publisher, creator, an expert according to professional experience or um, academic experience, organizational affiliations, or lived experience? Yes, that is a legitimate form of information and a legitimate form of authority. Accuracy. Accuracy is really tricky. We know what it is, but how do you figure it out? These questions will help you to determine it. Where does the information come from? Is the information supported by evidence? That's a really, really big one. Um, a clue that it is supported by evidence is that you have a list of references. Um, has the information been reviewed or refereed? Like, is it peer reviewed? Can you verify it? This is my very favorite question. Can you verify any of the information in another source or from personal knowledge? Huge, hugely important point. Um, and of course, if there's bias, it's probably not accurate. Even if there's just, I, this one I think is a little less important because shit happens and we all make mistakes. So try not to be too hard on an article if it does have an error. Stuff happens. Um, but the last criterion is purpose. What is the purpose of the information? Is it designed to persuade you that this is the ultimate um, sustainable technology for automotive plastic waste in India? I don't know. Is it does, is the source designed to give you information? So is it like a scholarly source? Questions only you can answer. So I'm not going to make you all answer this stuff um, on paper and submit it, but do take a time, take the time to look through it and check it out. Um, one thing I'd like to talk about before I finish the video under authority is this. A lot of times folks believe that if it comes from .edu, .gov, or .org, it is infallible information, and that's just not true. Even if it comes from a .edu or it, um, it's not, um, like the University of Utah, I can have web space at utah.edu that isn't regulated by the University of Utah. My boss could look at it, anybody could look at it, but they allow me the space to create stuff and I don't have to provide sources. Um, with .gov, just cross-reference and make sure that the government information that you're looking at is up to date because things change, especially related to technology. And .org used to be um, for nonprofits. It's not anymore. Anybody can be a .org, including your favorite band. Um, same with like .net, though. Who uses .net? I have, um, fun fact, uh, an email address that is adriana at, dot, at sexy .wharf. I am... It exists. Anyway, you can contact me there. This is a really good test. Thank you, librarians at Merriam Library, for this info. Um, you'll like um, you'll you'll be thanking them later too. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. You can search for me here, or you can oh my god, you can Google me. Just 
This is so much better. Google your librarian, Adriana, and you will find my YouTube channel. And this is where I have a lot of stuff that may or may not be relevant to what you're going through in school right now or dealing with. Um, but your this video will also be posted here. So if you ever want to revisit it for fun after you finish this class, you can. Or if you have a specific question for me, your librarian, this lady right here, please feel free to contact me. Um, you can contact me at I'm just going to pull up Adriana Parker. I'm going to do a Google search so you can find me very easily. I'm right here with a bunch of research guides. So these are all of my subject specialties, um, but I'm also the official engineering leap librarian, and I've been the in that role for the past almost 15 years. So please feel free to reach out if you need my help. This is my work phone number. Like I said, I'll put my my personal phone number on Canvas for y'all. Um, otherwise, just email me at adriana.parker at utah.edu. Like so. Check it out. There I am. Um, if you have a question or a comment or you're lost or even if you have questions related to research for other classes, hit me up. Just send me an email, subject line, help, maybe, and yeah, I am here for you. Take care, y'all. I love you. Talk to you next time.